OK, let's look at the first type of uh, transformation of uh, functions, the rules governing uh, the translation. Now, our graph here is very simply the graph of function x equals x squared. If we were to look at the graph of function x minus 2, what would that actually mean? Well, remember what this function notation stands for. If I said what's a function of 2, that means that you replace x by 2, and you'd get the answer 4. What would a function of t mean? It would mean that you would replace x by t, you'd get t squared. So function x minus 2 means I replace x by x minus 2. Let's just mark the graph of x squared. So if we were now to sketch the graph of x minus 2 squared, what would we notice about it? Well, we certainly would notice that if x was 2, y would be 0. We would also notice that if x was 0, negative 2 squared would be 4. And it doesn't take too much imagination to realise that that would be x minus 2 squared. OK, let's try something else. Function x plus 1. That, of course, is x plus 1 squared. And by a similar argument, we'd go back to negative 1. It's just we ought to mark the 2 there. So negative 1 would be where it hit the x-axis. It would also go through 1 there. And this time, the graph would be like that. So what's happening? This graph is moving around like this, isn't it? It's translating. Remember what the word translation means? It means move in a straight line. So function x minus 2, the whole graph moved <coughs> 2 to the right. Function x plus 1, the whole graph moves back by 1. Now it's always a frustrating point for students because it you want it to go the other way. You desperately want function x minus 2 to go back to and function x plus 1 to go that way. Sadly, it does it the opposite way around. So our first rule of translation is that, let's pop this in a box here so we don't get confused with the other stuff. So if we look at function x minus a, this moves a to the right. And we could represent that by a little ve column vector of a naught. And if you want to state the other one as well, then function x plus a is going to move a to the left. In other words, it's going to be the vector negative a naught. So that's how we cope with um, looking at translations parallel to the x-axis. OK, let's look at situations like this. Function x plus 4, function x minus 2. And again, I think we'll uh, still stick to the y equals x squared. It's uh, 
not very imaginative, but uh, it's the easiest one to draw. Now, so what does function x plus 4 mean? Well, if y equals x squared, then function x plus 4 is x squared plus 4. And if I draw that graph, it will look like that. And similarly, if we look at this one here, y would be x squared minus 2. And if I draw that, it looks like this. So again, you can see my parabola is moving in a straight line, but this time it's moving up and down. So my translation is parallel to the y-axis. So if we want rules for this, then function x, let's try and do it in, in one line this time, plus or minus a will be a translation of naught plus or minus a using our vectors. And to summarize then, if I do the x plus or minus a like that, then of course you've got to be really careful how you write the answer because it isn't plus or minus a, it's minus or plus a naught. So two types of translation of functions one by messing around inside the bracket and the other type, the y direction, by messing around outside the bracket. OK, Marie, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? OK, well, I want x on its own, so I would put x... 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. So 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on. Well done.